Hi, I'm Ian Call, the Technical Director of the Indoor Air Quality Association, bringing you an IAQA tech tip on limitations to air sampling for mold. In 2011, the California Department of Public Health published a statement regarding dampness and mold, which concluded the current practices for the collection, analysis, and interpretation of environmental samples for mold cannot be used to quantify health risks. For sure, there is a lot of debate over the usefulness of air sampling for mold. Why isn't air sampling more reliable? In this Tech Tip video, I'd like to highlight some of the limitations to air sampling for mold. One limitation is the variability of mold spore concentrations in outdoor and indoor air. If there were a steady, constant concentration indoors, an increase in levels due to a mold problem would be easily discernible in the data set. But alas, the variability causes concentrations to go up and down, so it's harder to distinguish increases caused by indoor mold problems. What causes this variability? First off, there's natural variability. Not only is there variability from season to season, there's variability from hour to hour. The weather, including wind, rain, and snow, can influence concentrations as well. There are also geographical variations as some areas on Earth naturally have higher airborne mold levels than others. But besides natural variability, there's also building-related variability. The book, Field Guide for the Determination of Biological Contaminants in Environmental Samples, lists three key sources of building-related variability. Mass of settled dust, room activity, and building factors such as HVAC and pressurization. If you'd like to learn about other limitations, such as sampling and analytical errors, along with strategies to overcome them, consider taking the two-part class in the IAQA University titled Air Sampling for Mold. Visit the IAQA website for more information.